Okay, this is a repair of a table fan. Uh, this fan, I don't know if you can see it there, is a Honeywell model HFT114. Okay, uh, CAS Incorporated. What it says on the back, but what it says on the front is Honeywell. This is probably like a $35 fan. Now it stopped working. I just start taking it apart. And finally I get down to this thermal fuse. So this is something which when it gets too hot, 150 degrees C according to the marking on this one, um, it just opens up. And this one was buried uh, in the transformer here. Uh, underneath this covering so you couldn't even see it, it uh, kind of maybe I should have suspected uh, that, that that's what the problem was since it just went totally dead okay now I was able to buy some 115 degrees C thermal fuses off Amazon and I've been using them to fix these fans because um, this happens quite a bit on a hot day the fan's a little bit dirty, it's on full blast, and then maybe someone just leaves it there hour upon hour upon hour continuously. And anyway, it burns out. Now it's it's actually nice to have these thermal fuses so the uh, windings don't burn out. And that's what happens on a lot of motors. And then you just, it's just toast. Um, so you could of course put this back together with just a wire but that's a fire hazard and then the thing will overheat and start smelling and yeah could burn up i guess okay now what i'll do is i'm going to start the reassembly and i'll hit pause um because i didn't show the disassembly it takes too long now this is not soldered in place the reason is because if you try soldering this in the heat from the solder opens up the fuse. Okay, it melts the little link that's holding the thing together. So this has crimp connections. Um, I'll just try to put it back in using the same components. We'll see how that goes. Okay, here's a pause. Okay, I have cut the leads off this fuse and I have crimped it with the wire, the original, I just opened up the original crimp, put the two wires in, and then crimped it back again. It seems to be okay. Okay, I have managed to squeeze in the other lead of the fuse <clears throat> into that little crimp in such a way that it won't fall off so that I can now work and place it on. Um, this uh, black wire, I had taken photos of this beforehand, so it'll be easier to reassemble. And you'll see as it goes, hopefully now I'll be able to put the other black piece in there and crimp it all while holding it over here and without having it all fall apart. We'll see what happens, okay? Okay, I crimped it in place. Um, it looks like it should be good enough. I should say it is possible to solder these, but the problem is you have to keep this cool. So one way to do it is to have somebody actually hold on to the fuse with their fingers squeezing tightly while you, someone else puts the solder dot on, and that's to cool, you need, oh, or get a heat sink, but a good heat sink is actually just holding on to it, but it helps to have two people for this. Okay, now I'm gonna add on this uh, insulation and try putting this back into where it was. Okay, I added the insulation. Now, you notice I had to slit open one of these because I was supposed to add this piece before I crimped. And of course, I screwed up. Now, I just slit that and slid it on. When this is all wrapped up, 
it should be fine. I could, I could add, obviously, some electrical tape or what have you to secure this, but I'm just going to see how it looks when it's all put back together. And it should be fine because you'll see that this material here, which is an insulation, is actually going to um, run underneath these. Okay. So, oh my gosh. Okay, I have threaded that through the way that it was previously. And I would say it looks okay. So I'm just going to continue putting this back together. Okay, I've just plopped down. Um, that insulation material and now I'm going to add this plastic wrap which was originally over that okay I've just oh, slid that plastic wrap around it I just wrapped it it doesn't really have any of the stick left to it but um, it seems to stay in place and I don't think it's going to go anywhere once it's all assembled, it should just be fine, just staying in place there. So, just continue. Okay, I've placed this back into position. It, it has a couple of studs and it has a couple of screws that go into the back base. Okay. And I've just kind of try to unravel uh, the wires as best I could so they don't seem too tangled up. It seems as though I could, could easily get them tangled in this process in such a way that maybe they won't reach where they're supposed to go. So I've tried to align them to give them so they didn't get caught up or bound underneath or um, so that I'll be able to wire them up. We'll see how that goes. Okay, next I'm going to reassemble this switch. It's got four connections on it. They're labeled L. That's probably for line. And then one, two, and three. And um, the line is went to the black. And then on the other wires, I, I just put some marks on them. Two marks on one of the wires. On the red wire, I put one mark. And then on the brown wires, I put either two or three marks, okay? And those are just the speed settings. Now, the connections on these, it were just these push-in connections. So I was able to depress the copper plate with a small screwdriver and then pull those out. Now, I didn't really have to do that in order to get at the, that... Um, thermal fuse, but it certainly made it a lot easier. The reason I really took it apart was because at the time I, I didn't know if the switch was bad and I um, wasn't quite sure how the circuit was wired up and all that. So mostly I was just trying to take everything apart. When I saw that I didn't have to unsolder this, I said, oh, okay, fine. Let me just see if I can do that. So now I'm just going to try pushing these wires back in. Putting this switch back into position. We'll see how that goes. Okay, I pushed the four wires into the three-way switch. Um, I just pushed them in basically as far as they would go until the insulation prevented it from going any further. Now, I should point out that this switch could actually slide into position in, in one of two ways in this. It could be a either this way or 180 degrees. Um, I, I did take kind of a look at the way that the knob would fit on in the final position and see how that would correspond to the so-called off position. And also by looking at the way the wires were, it seems as though I got it the right way, but I'm not 100% sure on this. Uh, I might have to twist it around. This is a point where I could um, test it. It's a, it's a wired up. Um, I, I, it, it came with wire nuts on all of these connections, 
which um, seemed to be twisted wire with a little bit of solder. So I think what I'll do is add all the nuts on, and then maybe give it a test. Okay, I added the nuts. Uh, I will say one thing, one of the nuts I was tightening, and I probably, I just twisted it too hard, tightening it, and it snapped off. Now the two wires are still connected actually down there. Uh, they didn't seem to come apart. Although this broke off, so there still could be some solder holding those together. And what I might do is just put some insulation on that. Uh, now uh, I'm giving it a little test. I, here's setting number three. Seems to be running fine. Uh, this has got an oscillating base feature, which is switched on right now. I switch it off. It stops working. Switch it on. It's working. Now, one thing that I've noticed, when I put the speed setting to two, it's not running. Or even to one, it's not running. So there is still something going on here. Uh, it's not the thermal fuse. The thermal fuse was was one thing, but now it seems as though that's another problem. So it seemed as though it actually had two problems, which is unusual. Um, I'll have to consider, but th there isn't really more than one way to wire this up, I don't think now. As far as I know, I did take the three-way switch up hard, unconnected and reconnected it, but I marked them before I put them in. So it does seem to be something going on, but what I'll probably do is just reassemble it since it works in one setting, and then at some point I could just take it apart again and try to figure out why the other two settings aren't working. Okay, I'll just continue the reassembly here. Okay, I, I just put a piece of heat shrink tubing over the spot where I had the, the broken um, wire from the wire nut. And um, I just heated it up with a heat gun. Um, a hair dryer. I couldn't find my heat gun. I used my hair dryer and a match. And it seems fine. It'll help hold these two pieces together and also to insulate it because it, when it shrinks it provides a snug fit. Okay so I think that's going to be fine. Now I'll just continue with the reassembly.